Welcome to The Line. The fourth National Climate Assessment, Volume 2, is the result of research by 13 federal agencies and more than 300 contributing authors. Here to discuss that report and the local impacts especially are this week's line panelists. I'm joined at the table by Daniel Foley, former State House Minority Whip. Diane Snyder's here. She's a former two-term state senator. Sophie Martin, one of our regulars. She's an attorney, educator, and regular woman about town. And Eric Riego is here. He's also a former senator in the New Mexico Roundhouse. Thank you all for being here. You like that intro? <laughs> it's new. Regular woman yeah, right. Brand about new. town. I was not wrong. I was not wrong. You're our woman about love town. That one. Uh, so we're going to stick with you. There's a lot to dive into. A lot of it is confirmation of what we already know, certainly. But the interesting thing about the latest report is the focus on the economic costs. When you start talking about 2050, which is not that far along, talking about hundreds of billions of dollars annually, annually in costs, and, and we'll get to New Mexico here specifically in a second, but your, your top, top takeaway from this report and your well, we should, uh, Let me say, in terms of the economic costs, we shouldn't be surprised. The U.S. military has been telling us this for decades. Mm -hmm. The insurance industry has been talking about this for decades. It shouldn't be surprising. Um, that there is this this uh, really serious impact coming. Mm -hmm. Now we're hearing more from farmers and ranchers. We're hearing more from people who are seeing on the ground exactly how it's impacting things like the growing season. Mm -hmm. um, we're seeing wildfires and the impact, the economic impact, and just the, the sheer personal impact, of course, mm -hmm. in addition to the environmental uh, impact of the fires in California, fires that we've had here in New Mexico and Arizona, um, et cetera. The, the West has been, I think, very clearly, uh, starkly impacted. Mm -hmm. We can see it. Mm -hmm. um, and if we're not thinking about both the economic harm and also the economic opportunity, um, then we're missing a piece of that puzzle mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Because um, the, the changes that we see are gonna force industry to make changes, mm -hmm. and those changes will be innovation that can then be um, commercialized, you know, um, create, create opportunities for our, uh, our folks to be employed, sure. et cetera. Absolutely. So I mean, I think, I think, you know, we have to take a, a more global look. It's going to impact each of us personally, but it's also going to Im impact our community and the globe as a whole. Good point there, Eric. Glad you're here. Happy Thanksgiving and all that too. Um, a little bit of an I interesting wrinkle in this report where there's recognition that poor communities and people of color and uh, uh, tribes are the most vulnerable folks out of this situation. Well, is that enough to get this uh, maybe a new understanding going here? Some folks respond to dollars and cents. Some folks respond to impact on people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, the interesting part about that is I've always been troubled by when uh, folks talk about things like carbon taxes, like really getting to some serious solutions to, to, to resolve this, mm -hmm. um, that those who are profiting from the current system often use these same folks, poor folks, to say, you know, we'd love to do that, but a carbon tax right. would disproportionately affect them. You know, if you really, if we, you know, even though um, renewable, uh, you know, the, the cost of renewable energy now is is much more cost effective in terms of solar and wind and so on, so it, it's a little bit off the table. But the argument was always like, mm -hmm. if we really want to do this transition, it's going to have a really deep economic impact on those least able to pay higher utility rates or pay for so to really put, to bring solar onto our, our uh in, in terms of our energy mix. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the, bi the, the bigger uh, <coughs> challenge I see economically mm -hmm. is that um, in a state like New Mexico, and I know we're gonna talk about this, is we benefit a lot of the investments and the spending is we benefit from the economics. So this is often argued not on these moral kind of conservation terms, but it's argued like, look, we need this money. We're a right. poor state. We don't have a lot of other industry. Mm -hmm. And I think we're not unique in the sense, but we're certainly near the top of the dependency on fossil fuels for our economy. And so um, the same people, the reason why they've been this bipartisan kind of consensus on this is, mm -hmm. is like, we need the money. So it's this Faustian bargain, like this is terrible. It's destroying our right. environment. It's affecting poor folks. It's affecting mm -hmm. farmers. And yet we need the money. That's so right. that's right. Interesting point there, uh, Senator, when your fellow ex-senator was just making there, when you think about who this is going to impact, but who's looking out for these folks? That's the interesting part about this. That's the part I don't read in a lot of the follow-ups. But when I see things like, you know, everything from heat strokes, increases in the number of a asthma cases, this is what happens to poor people when they don't have access to health care, when they don't have access to all kinds of uh, other things. So you can see how this is piling on other things that we've got going on in society. And it, we're gonna have to make some decisions, aren't we? Because we're not gonna be able to afford billions a year starting in 2050. It's just not gonna happen. 
No, we can't. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that uh, impressed me about the article was the change in how uh, people are looking at it now. We, as we've discussed, mm -hmm. this this discussion about uh, impact, environmental impact has been going on for thirty something years or more, mm -hmm. and but how it's shifting to where people are beginning to look at it differently, and particularly from an economic viewpoint, I look at the utility companies. Uh -huh. I can remember very recently, uh, I mean, 10, 15 years ago, when utility companies said, absolutely not, no renewable energy, right. it'll kill us, we, we can, you know, it'll cause people jobs, it'll do all these horrible things, mm -hmm. and yet you have public service company now do, be very much engaged in renewable energy. That's right. And one of the points that we were discussing earlier is sometimes, like the city of Albuquerque said, we're going renewable, and if you want to, uh, sell us energy, this is where we want to go. So I think as more communities and companies, Walmart has been doing uh, conservation and renewable energy for a number of years, as the large companies mm -hmm. and entities say convert to renewable, then the utility companies will find better ways <clears throat> to provide that energy to them. Mm -hmm. So that to me is the economic impact. Of course we move into whether, as Senator was saying about oil and gas, do, we can't give it up, we say, right. but I think as more and more changes, I've seen changes in the oil and gas industry sure. over the years. Sure. Better better treatment, better conservation around, how, how wells are, are situated, mm -hmm. All of that has come because of demand and need. Right. And so, I, like Sophie said, it's just a matter, people will become more creative. That's right, that's the opportunity, exactly. The right. opportunity exactly to make right. changes. But what you're talking about, I want to swing it down on this, what you're talking about, Senator, and, and Eric picked up on this, is urgency. Mm -hmm. Meaning, is all the things you're talking about, is all well and good, as they say, but is it happening fast enough or quickly enough? And I say this uh, uh, under what's out there right now, as you know, we have a president who says he just does not believe the report. And so what does that do to the urgency of the situation? Do you know what I mean? Is he being helpful here? I mean, it's worthy to have a discussion about these things. There's no doubt on that. But when you just come straight out and say, I do not believe this, how does that help industry and others move forward? What, what's just well, the industry, <clears throat> industries are clearly moving forward. I mean, mm -hmm. as, as Diane said, you know, there's been changes in the oil and gas industry. There's changes in the philosophy. I, I, look, there's no doubt that the earth is warming. No one's sure. denying that. Mm -hmm. The big argument becomes what's the cause, right? Mm -hmm. Is it completely due to the fact of use of fossil fuels? Does that have to do with the fact that we're growing with the number of people on this planet at an unbelievable rate? Mm -hmm. We're living extremely much longer times than before. Mm -hmm. um, you know, is what is the, the footprint of the United States on global warming? I, I think that what has to happen is, is that, like most issues, Everybody needs to take a deep breath, realize that we are moving in the direction of some changes. Mm -hmm. And look, it, we've proven this throughout history. I mean, we're not, human beings are not quick to make change. It's not, th especially if the change is uncomfortable to Fair any enough. of them. They're Fair not enough. quick to say, right. hey, I'm gonna do the right thing and be uncomfortable during doing it. Right. It normally takes us to the point of being so uncomfortable that the uncomfortableness outrides the, you know, or, or, or what the, the outcome is going to outride us being uncomfortable. So it is, are you saying everyone has to reach that threshold? Because we have a whole lot of people who are very uncomfortable now. Mm -hmm. And then we've got mm -hmm. this other set who just are clueless to the whole situation. How do we, how do we get that? I don't think that's a fair thing to say. I don't think it's mm -hmm. that they're clueless to the situation. I don't think they agree with those other people. Okay. So you, you don't have to like what they say. And I'm not advocating for or against those guys. But I think, I think when you make statements, Gene, sure. I'm just using you as an example, sure. mm -hmm. that's just like saying when the president says, I don't believe this. When you say, well, we got these people that are re very well informed and they're excited about it. We've got these people who don't know anything about it. Well, that's not true. They just, they've made a decision, right, wrong, or indifferent, that they don't agree. I think until those numbers start to move like we've seen anything else, mm -hmm. no one cares about... You know, no one cared about people being poor in this country until the Depression hit, and, you know, 80% of the people were poor. What happened? There's suddenly changes in dealing with poor. Mm -hmm. So I think it's going to take time. The good news, I think, <clears throat> that when I see this, is I think that we're moving quicker than people think, even though the number of people who are actively 
you know, out there running on these issues mm -hmm. politically and saying I believe it and those who don't. Mm -hmm. There's still a wide gap okay. between them. There's still changes that I think the two sides are coming Fair together. Fair enough. Right. Sophie, um, uh, on the, on the sure, question, please. Though, I, think, yep. I think that there is real importance in the fact that um, our president says things like I don't believe it and acts on them. This is a presidency, this is an executive that has sought to strip out the protections of the Clean Water Act. Right. Of other environmental protections, just this past week he said, Hey, GM, I'm going to take away your subsidies for electric cars. I mean, the, he has tremendous impact on how our country deals with um, the, the future harms of, of climate change. And um, he also has a group that says, well, he thinks that way. I like the cut of his jib. I'm going to think that way, too. Right. It's not just rhetoric. Right. It's action but, on but the part of this is, president and his administration. And just, I totally agree. And I think we have to remember the person who commissioned this report was George H.W. Bush. Thank That's you. where right. this yes. started. This That's is right. not a partisan issue, you That's know. Right. And, and I do think that this is where leadership matters, right? If, mm -hmm. if we had a president, Democrat, Republican, George H.W. Bush, whoever, who said, look, our own experts, 300 uh, you know, experts around the country and 13 agencies say, mm -hmm. this is real, what can we do about it? How do we take a leadership role? As opposed to saying it's a hoax, um, to pulling out of the Paris Climate Accord, saying it's really not our problem. And, you know, to Dan's point, maybe, you know, we are pretty privileged. You know, all of us at this table, certainly all of us in this, are pretty privileged, and, and we're not experiencing the firsthand effects of what this does. But you know what? It does have policy effect. Mm -hmm. uh, refugee crises, you know, a lot of the predictions in the international, what this is going to do to refugees, what this is going to do to conflicts around the world, right. what this is going to do to people who are disproportionately affected, who don't happen to be as privileged as we are. Right. It will affect us sooner right. or later in terms of, how much, how big our military spending has to be, what we have to do in terms of our water policy, and there's, these are big issues that will affect us. I hope that Dan is wrong. It's not that, you know, we do move with this at the speed of pain. I hope that we, with some enlightened leadership, that we actually get in front of this right. before we all have to say, well, my house is burning down, so maybe we ought to right. do something about it mm -hmm. now. That's a good point. The, the thing about, Go ahead, the th please. Just one quick thing. Mm -hmm. The thing about it is presidents have said various other things. I grant you that, that President Trump is making some changes on the laws which are not very positive in, in many minds. But the thing is, we always, there are always people out there working, right. in spite of what's being said at the national level or the state level. People are out there working. And as long as you have people working in the right direction, mm -hmm. quite truthfully, you can survive a president Good point. Or, or a governor. That's a solid point. I appreciate that. That's actually, it, it, it's us. It's us. We run this thing. It's exactly. well, except, right. to say, except to say that the That's time right. frame that we're looking at, according to a, a report that came out on Thursday at, mm -hmm. from out of Europe, is that the, the time frame we're looking at for major changes is 12 years. Right. That's a presidency and a half, right? right? right. That's a presidency and a half. It. So one president makes a huge difference yeah. in terms of our, uh, our progress. There you go. Still ahead on the line, wrapping up the 2018 election results, maybe, and what this year's stellar turnout may mean in terms for future election reforms.